Now one really fun photo effect that you can create with Photoshop is a sequence shot. So you're basically taking a bunch of different photos taken in sequence or like burst photos and then merging the different frames together so you have someone doing a bunch of different things in one frame. Now you can take these types of photos with just about any camera. You can take it on your smartphone or Canon, Sony, Nikon, whatever you're shooting with. I'll leave a few links down below of how you can access burst mode on a few different popular camera brands and phone models. So then you can take these types of photos and then edit them like we're going to here. So the first thing you'll do in Photoshop is actually open all of your files into a layer stack. So to do that, just go to file, scripts, load files into stack. In this dialog box, click on the browse option and then go and navigate to where your files are stored. In this case, I have all of my files right here, ready to go. These are all of the images that I want to include in my sequence. It can be pretty helpful just to organize this ahead of time, so then you're not having to fight through all these different folders or hundreds of images at once when you're going through this process. It's easy just to do all of this ahead of time. With all those images selected, click open, and then now you'll have a list of files right here. Now these are the images that are going to open as layers in a new project once we click OK. Photoshop will then take a moment to just load all of your files into different layers within a single project so then all of your photos don't open up in a bunch of different tabs which would be a huge pain in the butt. Instead, we get this, which just stacks all of our photos together and just makes life really easy. So once your images are loaded into a stack, like you see here, what I like to do is just label all of my photos one to whatever number you have as your final frame. Now, I usually like to work with my sequences from the starting to the end point. So in this case, he's starting here with the jump and he's gonna end down here. So that is sort of how I like to work my way through things. Since this is the first image, I'm gonna call this layer to one. Then if I turn off this layer, the next one you can see is jumping, so I'll call this two. And then it just goes down from there. So I'll just go three, four, five, six. So now what we have here is our first frame at the very top and then at the bottom frame number six we have the splash so he's gone all the way through all the entire sequence here now one really helpful quick tip to remember while you're doing this is you can actually view a single layer at a time just by holding the alter option key and then clicking on the eyeball option here that's going to turn off all of your other layers and only make the selected layer visible holding alter option once again clicking on the same eyeball icon it'll make everything visible once again. So that's a really easy way to just quickly go back and forth between viewing different layers. Now to make life easy with the method that I'm going to show you, because this is one of the easiest methods that you can do for merging sequence photos, is we need to reverse the order of our layers. So the starting point needs to be at the very bottom. So clicking on layer one, I'm going to just drag that down underneath layer six. So it's at the bottom of my layer stack. And I'm going to rinse and repeat this process. So we have numbers ascending from one to six or one to your final number. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, meaning we have our starting point at the bottom and our splash at the top. So now what we're gonna do is work through all of our frames from number one and add in our subject with a layer mask. Just clicking and dragging between all these eyeball icons to turn them off, we're gonna start with our layer two. Selecting our layer, we'll need to first add a layer mask onto that layer by clicking the layer mask icon. And then what we're gonna do is select our brush tool set black to our foreground color, and then make sure your opacity and flow is at 100%. Now, I also like to use the soft round brush just because it does a general purpose job and it just makes life pretty easy. So that's the brush that I'm gonna be using in this example. Now with my layer mask selected, I'm just gonna go and basically paint over my subject. So in this case, uh, my friend jumping here. So I'm just going to go and mask out his entire body. And you might be thinking, whoa, what the heck are you doing? You're taking a way the the star of the show well what you'll notice in just a second here is this is sort of like a little trick to make life really easy so now that we have applied black onto our layer mask we've gotten rid of our subject we can just go and press command or control I on our layer mask and that's gonna make the area that we just painted over visible while making everything else transparent therefore we now have two different copies of our cliff jumper here. So now we can go and do the same process with number three. So turning on layer number three, we're gonna click on that layer, add a layer mask, and then once again, we're gonna go and paint over our subject here. 
trying our best to stay nice and close around the edges of our subject so it's not spilling over too much. We're not just masking out a whole large area. We're just going right around our subject nicely. Now in this case, you can see the mountains got kind of messed up, but we'll touch that up in just a moment. So with that layer mask selected, press command or control I once again, that's gonna create another clone of him. But then this time we need to just go and touch up these mountains and make the edges align a little bit better. Luckily that's super easy. We'll just go and change the hardness of our brush to something like 70% since we're going along a sharp edge. And then with black set to my foreground color, we're just gonna go and mask out any edges that just look a little bit weird going around the edge of his body until we've touched everything up really nicely. So that looks good to me right there. And even around the trees here, everything's blending okay for me. Okay, so now we have three different copies of our cliff jumper. So now you guessed it, we're gonna go to layer number four, turn that on, and then we're just going to do this process once again. So adding a layer mask with layer four selected, and then we'll select our brush tool, make sure black is set to our foreground color. And then we're just gonna go and paint over our subject. In this case, I'm gonna change the hardness back to 0%. So we have a nice blended edge as we mask out each version of our sequence. If you stay closer to the edges of your subject, it just makes life a lot easier when blending everything together afterwards. Now that my subject's completely gone, I'll press Command or Control I with my layer mask selected to bring him back into view and hide everything else. And then just to touch things up, I'm gonna go through with black still set to my foreground color and just mask out this area to blend along the horizon line like so. So that looks really good to me right there. Everything blends nicely. Okay, now going to layer number five, turning that layer on, adding a layer mask, and then we're gonna go and mask out our subject once again. It's pretty straightforward. So you just rinse and repeat this process until you finish everything. But I'll share another little tip at the end that you'll want to know about if you're merging things a bit closer together. So now that that's all taken care of, I'll press Command or Control I on the layer mask, add that clone into it. And then we'll finally go to our layer six, turn that on, select it, add a layer mask, and then just go and mask out all of this water and as you can see here we suddenly have some feet that showed up and that's from one of our underlying layers so I'll just switch my foreground color to white and then just paint over that area just to get rid of those feet here like so okay now we'll press command or control I with our layer mask selected and now we have our splash added in. Now with my foreground color still set to white, I'm just gonna touch up this a little bit and add a bit more splashiness around his feet with a bit more precision now that I can actually see where his body actually is. So that looks pretty good to me right there, pressing Command or Control Zero to fit my image to the frame. And now we have six different versions of our person jumping off the cliff and we have successfully created a sequence shot. Now, once you're done with this, to keep everything organized, just shift click between your first and last layer, press Command or Control G to group them, and then call this to sequence. Now you can continue to edit your photo just as normal, but then you have all of your sequence photos merged here within the sequence group, all using layer masks. Now in this case, you can see that each version of my subject is actually quite a bit apart from one another. But if you're shooting with a camera that has a higher frame rate, as in it can shoot more images per second, you'll end up with a sequence where each version will slightly overlap. In that case, you're gonna have to use a pen tool to cut out each version of your subject so then they can overlap and it looks realistic still. If you use the brush tool like we just did in this example, it just wouldn't line up quite the same. So if you can, either select every other photo so that you have spaces between each frame or you'll have to use the pen tool and do a little bit more manual work that we didn't have to do here. Now, if you're new to the pen tool or wanna know more about it, make sure to click the video up in the corner right now where I'll share four of the best ways to cut out 
up images in Photoshop. So now that you've successfully created a sequence photo in Photoshop, you can do this with just about anything you want. It could be your dog running, you going cliff jumping like you have here, a cool trick that you do while you're skiing or snowboarding or whatever else you feel like doing. Sequence shots are a lot of fun and Photoshop makes it easy to create them. Now, if you haven't already done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below so we can hang out more, talk about Photoshop and learn photo editing together. I'd love to have you here and I thank you so much for watching this video. Anyways, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.